We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Alex Jones here with a message to fellow freedom lovers. The prognosis for the entire planetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. We've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The KTOR hand crank generator to charge up key equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic relocation, third edition by Joel Skousen. When disaster strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe, used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com and your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filters today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet? The highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease. It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to Big Pharma. The fight against the New World Order starts with you, and you can't stand against the machine of your sick, tired, and obese. When you visit InfoWarsHealth.com, be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products. And get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip. Defending the Republic from enemies, foreign and domestic, it's Alex Jones. I covered this a few weeks ago with Tucker Carlson. It's just a fact. We had John Bowne do a special report on it, the Democrats and the KKK. And they had MSNBC do like three, four shows on it. Young Turks did shows on it over and over again. Admitting some of it was true, but basically saying I was exaggerating and lying about the rest of it. Folks, I'm not exaggerating. I, I remember the politics of my grandfather coming back from World War II. And he didn't like the Democratic Party and the racism stuff. So he became a Republican, ran for office in his county and won. And that was a big split in some of the family. Not because they were really into race stuff, but because we, they were Southerners, you know, in East Texas. And you voted Democrat. And so I, I grew up hearing about that. I mean, I knew about that. And then I knew about LBJ and his letters about... I'm going to have all these N-words voting Democrat for 200 years. They couldn't stop Eisenhower and all the people passing the Civil Rights Act and stuff. And, 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 and Republican, you know, presidents like Eisenhower, you know, uh, opening up the schools with the military. And, 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 of course, there was still some racist elements of the Republican Party as well. But the Democrats were the party of the Grand Dragons, like Senator Byrd. And Nixon later, once the Democrats doubled back and got the minorities using race politics that have been so successful with poor whites, Nixon did have a Southern strategy to try to go to the South that felt betrayed and get them with some lip service. But the point is the Democrats, when they get up there and they promote race this, race that, 
constantly. And if you don't do what we say, you're a racist. I mean, throw me in that briar patch every day. I am sick of it. And it is a whopper when they have Fox sports commentators and, and everybody, you know, saying, you know, the NRA is a Ku Klux Klan. They want to kill black people. I mean, it, it's like saying Martin Luther King wants to kill black people uh, because the NRA was founded at the end of the Civil War to teach Northerners how to shoot and to arm free black slaves. And there was a program to arm black people. And it's so frustrating that Christians did that because they believed in everybody being free. And then nowadays, the Democratic Party is so anti-God and at their convention takes God out of it and gets off on it when they are such an evil group of people. And I don't mean the well-meaning liberal black person or white person that buys into it and drinks the poison. I'm talking about the leadership of the Democratic Party. I've been around them. They are into manipulating people. They are into playing people off against each other. They are not liberals, folks. Thomas Jefferson was a liberal. And, and, and I'm sick of these definitions that they hijack and act like they are the civil rights movement or they are the abolition movement when it has nothing to do with them. In fact, they were the people that opposed it. And I'm almost cursed with knowing the history and then sitting here and watching these liars race bait all day. Now, we're talking to Reverend C.L. Bryant, RevCLBryant.net. Uh, he's the main uh, expert in the excellent film, Runaway Slave. You can just Google Runaway Slave, the film, and find the website and get it. I, I want to carry it. We haven't got that deal done yet. I told the guys I want to carry it. It's excellent. Because this is a subject, I notice, Reverend, that when I cover it, the, the, the race pimps go into Linda Blair-like convulsions uh, and almost start, you know, vomiting green pea soup. But you were trying to get into Obamacare, so break that down. Obamacare is a tool uh, to further enslave not only black folks, but all folks. Once they control your health care, they control you. You were saying something, Alex, that was very interesting that I want to chime in on. It was Democrats who stood in the doorway of the University of Alabama in the person of George Wallace saying segregation now and segregation forever. It was Democrats who tried to stop the Little Rock Nine from going to Little, Little Rock uh, High School. And it was a Republican president, Eisenhower, you mentioned him, who in fact uh, uh, wrote the first civil rights legislation back in 1957. And that same legislation in that year was filibustered and watered down and basically had his teeth taken out of it by two United States senators. Their names were Lyndon Johnson and John F. Kennedy. Nearly 10 years later, the same civil rights bill that Eisenhower tried to get passed in 1957, Lyndon Johnson, with the help of a Republican uh, Congress and Senate, got that bill passed. It was not Democrats who had the interest of civil rights for black folks, but somehow they have become identified as the saviors of black folks. And they use people like Al Sharpton. They use people like Jesse Jackson and Ben Jealous to perpetuate a lie that has been existing now for 50 years. And it is time to set the record straight. Well, you're doing that. And what about the issue expanding on that of of the race baiting, the race pimping. I mean, when you turn on MSNBC, it is almost comical how over the top it is that, uh, again, if you don't agree with anything they say, you're a racist. I really see this backfiring and people that I've known my whole life or most of my life who've never actually been racist, they're not racist now, but they're so tired of being accused of being racist that it's starting to actually cause division. And I think Clarence Thomas got criticized a few weeks ago for saying when I was going to college in the 60s, there was less race problems than I'm seeing now because of all this race baiting. And I got to say, Obama has been the biggest divider that I could have ever imagined. I'm going to show you what race baiting and what racist really is. I throw the gauntlet down right now on your show to Al Sharpton, to any uh, person who calls themselves a black liberal. I dare you to say anything against MSNBC, NBC, CBS, or ABC. I dare you not to speak the party line that they want you to speak. 
And I want you to see what happens if you speak your core value mind. I dare you to say the truths or speak the same language that our grandfathers and great grandfathers spoke. I dare you to talk against the idea uh, that they have planted in your mind in order to give you a paycheck and see just how long your gravy train lasts. That's racism. When they control your thought, when they control your mindset and what you're going to say, what you're looking at and when you look at me is a free man. I go where I want to go. I associate with who I want to associate with. And Alex, I hope you know that after the day, I'm going to say what's on my mind and the chips will fall where they're made. I am not beholden to any network, any party, any organization. I'm a free man. I do exactly what that old granddad of mine said I should do. He didn't go through all that he went through so that I could be black. He went through all that he went through so I could be free. And to understand for myself that America is the greatest success story the world has ever known. Absolutely. We have to throw down the gauntlet because that's really what the Democratic Party is all about. And the Republicans certainly have their problems. I'm a libertarian. It, it's that they, they constantly are on this moral high ground. And I'm somebody who's protested the Ku Klux Klan probably more than a dozen times when they would come to town and things over the years. And it's very insulting to have them say uh, with Steele, the former head of the Republican Party, that Alex Jones is, quote, deeply racist and then not show what I said it's like they don't even have to, it's like saying, you know, Alex Jones robs banks and then showing no proof. It's a new level of slander, libel, defamation. But I've got to say, it doesn't work anymore because they say it to everybody. And I've seen them say of libertarian or conservative or Christian black leaders that, that, that they're racist or they're anti-black. It's just such a hoax. And I see that, you know, 95% of blacks vote Democrat I mean, that is just bizarre. How do you break that hoax? How do you break that mind control? By doing exactly what we're doing right now, Alex, screaming it from the rooftops. But this is what I want to say to your so-called uh, why for the sake of conversation it's necessary. Uh, there has been a methodology used uh, for a number of years now, particularly from the 70s forward. It's called white guilt. Uh, and white guilt is something that right now is in fact being exercised by so many on the left. Whenever there is anything that they want to brand us with or they want to derail a program or uh, uh, an idea that we're trying to push forward and is in total disagreement with them and it may be about to expose uh, what's going on. They throw out the race card or they throw out the Uncle Tom card. And But it particularly works on white folks, conservative white folks, uh, white guilt. I want to say to your white audience in particular, Get over it. You know that you were not there for any lynchings or anything of that nature. You know who you are. And so I would say to you, if they want to fight this fight, then let's fight this fight and get it over with. Because as long as you run away from this fight, they'll chase you with that white guilt. And as far as myself and people like Herman and Alan West and, 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 and people like that, uh, I would say that when you look at the Democrat Party, you are looking at a plantation. And let me tell you why I say that. Back in the days of slavery, when that slave ran away to the North, he didn't see many free black faces like he saw in the South, where he was in a system where there was nothing but black faces. I see in the Democrat Party often uh, so many blacks. And people ask, CL, how come there's more blacks in the Democrat Party than there are in, in the Republican Party? It's the same reason there were more slaves on a plantation than there were in the North. It's because there were very few of us who had the courage to leave that system of tyranny and find freedom for ourselves. And so I would say to your white audience, get over the white guilt. And I would say to the black audience, it's okay to leave the plantation, as my good friend Mason Weaver has uh, wrote a book about.
Well, there's no doubt that uh, the Democrats were set up in modern times by Margaret Sanger, and, and, and it's just been absolutely devastating. And that same cultural d destruction is being visited on everybody because the state with Cloward and Piven, as you know, wants us dependent on the system. And it's more of a sharecropping system, which is slavery as well, where we literally owe our soul to the company store, which is the establishment.